All right, welcome back to another famous Dr. Squirrel guide video. Today we're going to talk about pets. And after you watch this video, you'll know literally everything there is to know about pets as quickly as possible. I'll try and keep this video under 10-15 minutes so I don't waste too much of your time. I've broken this video down into seven topics. Number one, how to get pets. Number two, types of pets. Number three, pet skills. Number four, enhancing. Number five, synthesizing. Number six, affinity. And the last one will be ideal pets. So if there's only a specific topic you're interested in, just go ahead and skip to it. Let's get started right away. Number one, how to get pets. Pretty simple. You can get pet tickets one of two ways. You buy it from the pet shop. You can get up to 55 using gold. It'll cost 5.5 million, though. They're pretty pricey, 100K each. Or you can use crystals. I advise never using that. Um, you'll also get a free pet ticket every day. And you can also get pet tickets from the world boss occasionally, but it's not very consistent. So basically, to get a pet, you click this adopt button and you click confirm and you'll get a random pet. And your chance of an S rank skill is 5%, D rank skill 35%. 0.5% of the time you'll get special form. It's just a visual thing. It doesn't mean anything, but it'll have like shiny stars next to it or whatever. So that's all there is to talk about getting pets. Pretty straightforward. They don't drop or anything. Occasionally, there'll be a side quest story reward. Number two, types of pets. The main thing to know is that there's two types of pets, battle pet or lobby pet. If you look at this mint Yoki, it has a sword icon to the left. That means it's a battle pet. You can also click on it in the top left above its name, it'll say battle. And this one, this beer mug thing, it'll say lobby in the top left. So basically, battle pets are used in battle and they'll give you some kind of special bonus depending on what kind of content you're doing. The ultimate example is the hunt pet. And when you go into your battle screen, you assign a pet by clicking to the right below your guardian. You'll see I have this pet thing there. I can send it home if you don't want to use it. You'll always want to use it though. Or you can assign it by saying travel together in a list of skills it has to the left. You can also click settings to change various things like restarting battle when defeated. Um, you can click this if you're leveling fodder and you don't want to keep going when something's maxed. You can also set it to recharge energy, sky stones, or leaves. And that's basically how to assign and use a battle pet. If I can get out of this screen. Um, and lobby pets uh, are just the ones that sit in your lobby all day. Every 22 hours, it'll give you a special gift. Mine is this hilarious rat-looking thing sitting on the bar stool. If you click on it, you can change it to a different pet. It'll also tell you what bonuses it's giving you here. For me, it's enhancing boosts. So let's go back to the pets. And then the final thing I want to talk about is the actual kind of pet doesn't matter. Like Amoria, Smoke Cheese, doesn't mean anything. Those are just visual things so that people can collect the kind of pets that they want. Don't think that they ma really matter. When they say you can't enhance pets of the same type, by type they're referring to battle or lobby and not their picture. You can synthesize uh, Edward and a Sand Squeak together. Number three, probably the topic you guys care about is pet skills. Um, every pet has different skills, so battle and lobby pets will have different skills. Like, you'll never have a battle pet with an equipment enhanced skill because it doesn't make any sense. And um, I'll put a link to a list of the pet skills below. I don't want to spend too much time talking about it in this video. But basically, the skills are tuned towards hunts, spirit alter, adventure, or side story. So those are the four kinds of pets you're really going to want to build because you're not going to have a pet that has one hunt skill, one spirit alter skill, one adventure skill. I mean, you could, but that's very inefficient and idiotic. Really, you want to have one hunt pet that has all skills relevant to hunting. You want to have one side story pet that has all skills relevant to side stories. I haven't cared that much about this pet. That's why it doesn't do that. Like the spirit alter bonus doesn't matter. But basically, the idea is once you fully gen for your pets, you want all the skills to match. Um, for example, if I have the Spirit Alter Pet, this one um, makes no sense because the second skill is a Hunt skill. But ultimately, my goal is to have a Spirit Alter Pet that has Common, Greater, and Epic Rune drops. Make sure all your skills match. And if you want to see a breakdown of all the actual skills, go to the link in the video description. Otherwise, I'll talk about Ideal Pets at the end of this video. 
enhancing this is something you probably want to know about your pets don't get any experience from anything except enhancing you don't get experience of bringing them into battle to enhance it all you really have to do is click on it and feed it other pets that's the only way to level up your pets um, so I'm gonna go ahead and enhance this one just to show you and you'll see the level goes from 1 to 10 uh, the other thing you could do is you can feed it normal food and it's a lot cheaper than using pets because they only cost stigma but basically it does the same thing you would click enhance select the food and it'll level up and the reason you want to enhance it is because you can't synthesize it until it's at max level so basically make sure that you're enhancing the pets that you're interested in so you can level them up and that's all there is to say about enhancing now let's go to topic number five which is probably the most complicated and important topic so i'll spend a few minutes on this and that is synthesizing synthesizing is when you upgrade the generation of your pet if you look at the stars next to the name the generation is the number of stars so this is a generation four pet this is a generation one pet the generation matters because the higher generation pets can have more skills generation one pets only have one skill generation two and three pets have up to two skills and generation four pets can have a whopping three skills so for your best pets your hunt pet first you want to get it to gen four right away now with the latest update the other thing the generation controls is how many repeat battles you can do so i think it goes 5, 10, 15, 20 repeat battles depending on the generation. So if you have a Gen 1 pet, you can only repeat five times before you have to click it again. So that's why you want to upgrade. So to synthesize, you basically get a max level pet. It has to be max level. Then you click synthesize. Once you have one max level, you can pick a different pet that isn't max level. And you just click this. If you want to keep the appearance, actually I'm going to go back and uh, change this pet so it's more obvious. The first thing you'll have the option is to select appearance. If you like the graphics of one of your pet, you can pick it to keep it. I usually don't care. I'll just select this lime mush because it looks like a mushroom. The next thing is select the skills to inherit. You can select, depending on the generation, um, one, two, or three skills to inherit. Or you can inherit nothing. So if you want to synthesize but all the skills are bad, just click nothing and you have a chance to generate a new skill, even an S skill. So basically here, I'm going to select nothing, but I could have selected this, and you'll see it pops up here to say that it will save it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and undo that. And then this third thing here at the bottom, which is new, is a way to increase the chance of getting a higher generation pet. You'll see without adding anything, I have a higher, an 80% chance to get a higher generation pet. So it's important to note that synthesis can actually fail, but... If it fails, you still inherit the skills, you still inherit the appearance, but the generation won't go up. So don't worry about your both your pets disappearing, getting nuked. The only thing that fails is the higher generation. You'll still be able to keep your skills. But if 80% isn't enough for you, and note that at higher generations this chance gets lower, you can add more pets to make it go up. So I added a Gen 1 pet, and it went up to 100%. This is more obvious in gen 2 pets because 60 percent if i add a gen 1 pet you'll notice that it only goes up by eight percent but if i add a gen 2 pet you'll notice it went all the way up to 100 so higher generation pets added for synthesis will increase the chance of success much higher and then basically at this point i'll go back to that other trash pet if you click synthesize you will get a new pet so here it's going to warn me that I'm not like keeping a, I didn't select any skills or an appearance. I'll click synthesize anyway. Let me just double check. Yeah, I don't care about these. Synthesize. And you'll notice that I generated two new skills. The generation went from one to two. My max level went up, so I'm going to level them up again. And basically, that's all there is to synthesis. And basically, you'll be doing this over and over, kind of like leveling mega phantasms to eventually build a fourth generation pet. One final thing to note is when you're synthesizing, you have to synthesize with the same type of pet. So when they say type, like I mentioned before, they don't mean the actual like, cat thing or wizard thing or whatever. It has to be a lobby or a battle pet. So I can synthesize a flu moss with a wizard mong because they're both battle pets, but I can't synthesize a um, city. Like you'll notice that that 
flu moss thing or wizard monk doesn't show up here because they're not well that's also a gen 3 but either way it wouldn't have shown up because that's a lobby pet and the other ones are battle pets so basically that's all there is to say about synthesis the final topic in terms of enhancing is affinity basically affinity just controls how good your skill is so here this is a max affinity pet you'll notice I have a 10% chance to receive an additional piece of equipment. If I find that same skill on something else, like uh, this thing, it has no affinity, so you'll notice it's only 7.5% chance. So if you click this question mark next to affinity, it kind of explains to you at what affinity milestones the skill effect increases. And basically, you want to do this by clicking play, and you can either use stigma, I'll just use it here as an example, you'll see it went up 20, or you can use a toy, save these for your good pets because they're kind of limited. You can buy a few every week and it'll increase it by 100. But basically, as you do affinity, um, the pet skill will improve. And the other thing to note is that if you do synthesis, the affinity, whichever pet of the two has higher affinity, will transfer over. So don't worry about losing your all your affinity if you do synthesis. You'll keep the higher one of the two. It doesn't add them or anything like that. So... Pretty much that's all there is to say about affinity. So now let's go to the last topic, which I am sure most of you are interested in, is ideal pets and what pets you want to get first. Clear winner is hunt pet. Get your hunt pet first, because you're going to be doing hunts more than any other content in the end game. So mine is not perfect because I haven't gotten another fourth gen battle pet to synthesize, but my first two skills are perfect. Additional piece of equipment, and lesser charm and eventually i'll get double hunt materials that is the perfect hunt pet to me and there's going to be some disagreement with me here the perfect lobby pet is equip enhanced experience equip enhanced cost because there's no rng and the last one would be greater chance for greater success on enhancing some people will say that this is the best bonus gold earned from selling equipment i disagree not because it's the best single bonus, because it is, but because there's no complementary bonus. And I'll link the list of pet skills below, like I said. But there's no other lobby skill that has anything to do with selling equipment. And you can't stack this skill three times. So basically, the ideal thing to do is to have a fourth gen enhancing pet, because all these bonuses stack when you're enhancing. And you keep this gold pet. And after you collect the reward from your lobby pet, to sell all, like switch to this pet, sell all your equipment, and then switch back to your enhancing pet. Because again, there's no complementary bonus to this. If you're just trying to get gold from selling equipment, just keep your gold and keep your equipment and then sell it once a day when you have this lobby pet equipped. So I think that's the best way. For spirit altar, I don't care about spirit altar. Um, that's not a very useful pet to me because I never have problems with runes. But obviously you would want common, greater, epic chance drop. That's pretty straightforward. Um, event pet. Basically the event pet and the adventure pet are exactly the same. Get all the skills, the catalyst drop skills. And then for adventure, you want the double AP. And the side story, you want the event currency. And in terms of order of importance, I'll go over that again. It, it's hunt, then lobby, then side story, then adventure, and then spirit. That's my opinion because I barely do spirit altar. I barely do adventure because the side stories nowadays take so long to clear that I'm always spamming side story. So side story is third. Lobby is second because you're going to be enhancing all the time and selling all the time. And hunts. Every endgame player will tell you that they're mainly using 90% of their energy on hunts. So your hunt pet is your number one priority. Now, I'm pretty sure I covered pretty much everything there is to possibly know about pets in these 15 minutes. But if you have any more questions, leave them in the comment section below, and I'll answer as soon as I get to it. Like and subscribe if you want to see more tip videos. I'll do a lot more tip videos going forward. And uh, good luck with your pet summons. See you later, guys. Peace.